Hello all. Today we are going to discuss a topic called priority scheduling with arrival time. So about non-preemptive priority scheduling with respect to the arrival time. In this example, we have taken three process P1, P2, and P3, and burst time of each process is also available, and the arrival time of all each process is also available. And then one more column here we are introducing the priority two one. Three. Okay, so here one is considered as the highest priority, and rest of them will consider two is the next highest priority, and three is the next two next highest priority. Okay, so we have to mention one is in some example they said that three is the highest priority, one is the lowest priority. In this example, we are going to assume one is the highest priority. So the process P two has the highest priority, but It with respect to the arrival time, so the gang chart is slightly changed. See, at zeroth millisecond, the process P one arrives. Okay, so once the process P one arrives, since it is a non preemptive, it will execute till the burst time. What is the burst time of process P one? Three milliseconds. From zero to three millisecond, process P one gets executed. Okay, within the three millisecond. All other processes are also arrived. P two is also arrived and P three is also arrived. Now we have to check the priority. The priority of P two is one and the priority of P three is three. So compare to P two and P three, which one is highest priority? P two is highest priority. Okay, that's why the next process is P two. Suppose in this example, if I am consider. Three is the highest priority. Okay, the gang chart gets slightly changed. Zero millisecond process P one gets executed, and due to the three milliseconds, all other process gets arrived. If I said three is the highest priority, definitely the CPU will gives the priority to process P three. But now I am assuming one is the highest priority. That's why P two gets executed. The burst time of process P two is two. That's why from three to five milliseconds, process P two is executed, and the last chance is given to process P three. Okay, so it is a non-preemptive. That's why first we give the conditions to the arrival time, and then next one is given to the priority. The arrival time is zero. That's why P one gets executed. Suppose if both the process arrived at zero millisecond, then check the priority. Okay, which priority has to be executed? Okay, so that is very very important. So in priority scheduling, we'll have a one more column that is called as priority. Now we'll calculate the completion time. Uh, as I earlier said, the completion time is calculated from the right turn. The completion time of process P one is three. That's why I have written here three. And completion time of process P two is five, so here five, and the completion time of process P three is six. That's why six. Okay. So once the completion time has been calculated, next we have to calculate the turnaround time. So what is the formula for turnaround time? Completion time minus arrival time. Okay. So the completion time is three, the arrival time is zero. Three minus zero, which is equal to three. So, what about process P two? The completion time is five, and the arrival time is one. So, five minus one, which is equal to four. And what about process P three? The completion time is six, and then arrival time is two. So, six minus two, which is equal to four. So, this is turnaround time. What about waiting time? Waiting time equal to turnaround time minus burst time. So, the turnaround time is three minus burst time is also three zero. What about the waiting time of process P two? Turnaround time is four, and then burst time is two. So four minus two, which is equal to two. Waiting time for process P three. Turnaround time is four, and the burst time is one. So four minus one, which is equal to three. Okay. So now we'll calculate the waiting time. So how will you calculate the average waiting time? So waiting time of each process divided by total number of process. Here total number of process is three. Waiting time of process P one is zero. Waiting time of process P two is two, and waiting time of the process P three is three. 
so which is equal to 5 divided by 3 which is approximately 1.6 okay what about average turnaround time the average turnaround time equal to turnaround time of each process divided by number of process turnaround time of process p1 is 3 plus turnaround time of process p2 is 4 turnaround time of process p3 is 4 so divided by 3 so which is equal to 11 11 divided by 3 which you will get 3.6 okay so this is the way that with arrival time means the gang shot is slightly different and without arrival time is based on the priority will draw so here the foremost important given to the arrival time thank you all